There are no other announcements as I, I people know it's glaring at me. So we're going to jump into the next slide. Hopefully, if you click back on it, maybe. There we go. All right, 2 Samuel 11. This is the racy story of David and Bathsheba. But there's murder, intrigue, and it's pretty gruesome. I don't know, have they made a movie about this yet? They could have. It's bad. But yeah, let's, I hope, there we go. True or false? An idol my, yeah, my, my grandma told me that, my goodness, from day one, and that is a true statement. Battery dead? Oh, oh no, that's there. It's back. I'm gonna have to look at that after. Not to move at all. How's that? Really? Mary and, and just you. I think. How, how's this? No. Oh. Oh. David, Bathsheba, and Joab all sin in David's sword. Bathsheba, that, that is true, yeah. David was running for his life that he fell into great sin. False. You might think it's when times are bad. Nope, it's when times were really good. David got attacked. Four, our iniquities separate us from our God. That's true. This is a problem that David runs into. And um, if you talk to scholars, Martin Luther, they all say that David had lost his faith during this. So that is. All right, this is 2 Samuel 11, 1. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. What insight does verse 1 give us into the whole chapter? What should David have been doing? Go to war, buddy. You were a warrior king. In fact, I think I asked the question, yeah. Finish this song. David slayed his, Saul slayed his thousands. David his 10,000. David was arguably the greatest warrior king ever. David's mighty men is a thing. It's got a list of all the accomplishments that David's buddies did in war. They were a world power just for a few years, but nobody beat them. And so what did David do when, in the time when the kings stayed, go off to war? He stayed home. Yikes, that's a bad idea, David. And he gets himself into, into some trouble. And here we go, verses 2 through 3. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, Isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? What important piece of information does David's servant give? She's married! Was that okay to take a married woman and treat her as your own wife? It's as PG as I can make it. No, that's not okay. It's never been okay. But he did it anyway. So, we've got a problem. Bathsheba's pregnant. And so, 2 Samuel 11, 10 through 11. When David was told, Uriah did not go home, he asked him, Haven't you just come from a distance? Why didn't you go home? Uriah said to David, 
The Ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents. And my master Joab and my lord's men are camped in the open fields. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Uriah is more uh, noble than David. At, the point, at this point, he, he, he's drunk. So, yeah, he's doing well. What do you think about David after getting to know Uriah, Bath, Bathsheba's husband? David's stock plummets. For the rest of his life, he's just a train wreck downhill. His whole family, his kids, the lousy dad, a lousy leader. Yikes. He is awful. And it's at this time then that he writes some of the beautiful psalms of repentance. Because he's a loser. I don't know how else to say it. And yet he finds forgiveness from our God. And so most of us find ourselves not riding high our whole life in perfection, but crashing and burning over and over again. And going back to our God for grace. All right, 15 through 16. In it he wrote, Put Uriah in the front line where the fighting is fiercest. Then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. So while Joab had the city under siege, he put Uriah at a place where he knew the strongest defenders were. What was David's intent? Kill him. My word, David. This is, this is sprawling out of control. And he brings other people in with this and makes his commander of the army an accessory to murder. I mean, it's horrid. This account took place at the height of David's career when he enjoyed success in battle, popularity among the people, and a distinction of being labeled the man after God's own heart. This is, this is, uh, that's 1 Samuel, this is 2 Samuel. Why should this serve as a warning to us? Take heed where you stand, lest ye fall. We, I, we were warned up and down and over again, privately by pastors, pastors, wives. This is me personally. I have colleagues who said the same thing. <laughs> there will be some temptation that attacks you constantly. You do not understand how much the, the, the devil hates you. And if Satan can drag me down, what will happen to the 130 souls in my flock? I'm not saying you'd all be lost, but it'd be hard. I know this from experience and watching it happen in other churches. It's a train wreck. And it's terrible. So pray for your pastors that we do not do anything horribly sinful and ruin our lives. Isaiah 15. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. How far away is God? This is an open-ended question. He's right next to you, Pauline. You are absolutely right. But if you are King David, he's the Grand Canyon away. If you've never known God, if you're like Willow and you've gone a million days without God's grace. Willow didn't. It's not like that, but it's just what she said. She had a good comment. God is so far away, you have no idea how to come near. But Pauline, you're absolutely right. God is right next to you. Always. But if you don't know that, Pauline, someone's got to tell you. This is where you, you come in. And I, I, I know you do, Pauline, but um, yeah, that, that message of the gospel is powerful. Any other questions on this made-for-TV movie that is 2 Samuel 11? If not, say this prayer with me. Lord God, when I sin... And I often do shatter my pride in the hardness of my sinful heart with the message of your law. Lead me to repent, to see my salvation in your Son, Jesus Christ, and to rejoice in it. Amen. There are no other announcements. May God give you all a blessed week. I was blinded 
You gave me eyes to see. I was going under. You reached out to me. No, there's nothing you won't do to pick me up and pull me through every hour.